Okay. So the Battle of Marston Moor, July 1644. In sheer numbers of men involved, Marston Moor is thought to be the largest battle ever fought on English soil. It started at around 7 p.m. and lasted about two hours. And but even in that short time, the Royalists lost 4,000 men, killed and had 1,500 taken prisoner. The Scots and Parliamentarian casualties were much lighter, perhaps as few as 300. So I've been visiting Marston Moor for years, photographing and videoing and recording audio. And I have captured some amazing evidence of the uh, the afterlife, shall we say, spirits, wraiths, shells, husks of the men that died on that day a long time ago. And um, they come in all shapes and forms, different sizes, some very small, some very large some very transparent, some very solid and um, both royalist and parliamentarians this is an example of one such uh, looks like a parliamentarian he's got his uh, boots on and um, he's got a square pack around his waist and uh, some charges to the right hand side I'm gonna draw lines to divide them there's about four charges there's a square pack and coming down this side he's got these charges look I'm not making a very good job of showing you where they are but you can probably see them and you can see his moustache and when you see these spirits a lot of them um, have the typical uh, cavalier image, the moustache and the little goatee. And often they're overlapped by other spirits. You can see other spirit faces and so forth. Because they're etheric, of course, and not solid, this does happen. So I've drawn around his face, just so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see his eyes and his moustache. And he's pointing out something to me. I don't know what, but this is quite common. Probably where he died or where he's buried or where he's left something, where I should be looking. And if you look around, by the way, whilst I'm doing this, look around at the side, you'll see lots of other spirit forms. And you will see a lot of stuff that I haven't drawn around, I haven't drawn your attention to. It's not that I haven't seen them, I have seen them. It's just that if I was to outline every single detail, we would be here all day. But you get the feeling that um, uh, they probably think the war is still on in some cases. I've just drawn around that head and hat there, but actually his body comes all the way down. He's standing there with his right arm out holding something. And uh, there are other men around him and as I say they sometimes overlap if you look up to where, where I'm drawing at the moment if you look upwards and right you'll see another head and um, if you look in this dark area where I'm concentrating now you'll see a lot more than I actually highlight especially down near the bottom left there look and um, it's very, very busy. I mean, s spiritually, if you like, mediumistically, it's. I'm very busy when I go there. I'm overwhelmed by the number of um, spirit forms that are there. There's a lot, and you just miss them there, just the other side there of the obelisk. Here you see a man peeping round, look, if you look again the edge of the obelisk there, you can 
see a man peeping around you can see his moustache he's thinking what's he doing I've just pulled up in the car what am I doing I think they're pretty used to me now I've been coming for so long I generally bring some roses and place them uh, I don't put them on the obelisk I won't put anything near a sundial after all we know what it represents that's why we have them on war memorials soldiers are seen as soul dyers look at the spelling those who die for the sun soldiers are sacrificed to the sun god we know who that is we know even this war in fact was fought for the same cause as the french revolution and the spanish revolution and world war one and two and the impending world war three just because it was in 1644 doesn't mean that uh, it wasn't fought to serve a particular agenda it was look who was funding it look who benefited so uh, here's quite a good example you can just see his top half because the uh, the memorial base cuts off his legs but you can see this man's tunic and if you look very carefully the bottom part of the tunic you will see a sword you'll see the pommel and the uh, finger guard and the uh, the blade resting horizontally across his body and I'm going to draw around it in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about it looks like he's holding a piece of paper probably a map or something and there's a sword I'm drawing around it now you'll see these things a little bit clearer when you take the outline off I haven't got time to take all the all of the outlines off but you should see the sword now if you look to the left of that figure you'll see quite a lot more and a man again with a moustache and little goatee <clears throat> and again there's a lot of figures against the far hedge there and um, you know just take the time to have a good look slow this down and of course you'll see uh, a lot of these figures wearing these black broad brimmed hats big black floppy hats they were very common not the most common hat worn during the Civil War that was uh, like a little woolen well you might say like a bobble hat today in fact very similar to what we see worn today like a beanie hat knitted by local uh, ladies this looks like a man the one I've not the one I'm drawing at the moment the one I've just drawn around looks like a man riding on a cow actually but here's a man and um, the problem with a lot of these is that they're overlapped by by other stuff and by other spirits so although you get to see some of it you don't get to see it all if you look to the right of the man in the middle the man that I said is riding on the cow and the more I look at it the more I think that's the case you'll see another black hat sticking out of the hedge if you look on the lane by the way you'll see a man in a blue tunic and a black floppy hat and you can see these shoulder straps the ones that go across his back here he is standing in the middle of the lane a very good example of um, a ghost a spirit form of a civil war soldier and there he is standing with his back to me and if you look around him you'll see a lot more in the hedgerows almost as if they're looking for uh, the enemy remember time is linear on the other side and so there is no tomorrow or yesterday there is only the now and there he is so maybe they're looking expecting more trouble thinking it was just happening today but if you look very carefully sometimes squinting helps and if you look at the trees in the background you'll see a lot more of these um, faces and um, and figures look in the hedges you'll see a lot more 
sometimes just the head and shoulders sometimes the whole body this one i'm drawing at the moment if you look he has a round like fez type hat on like a christmas cake with a round bobble in the middle which I think was probably one of the Scottish regiments that came down uh, to fight on the royalist side. And you look at this rather grim looking man in the background, this grim looking face. But he's just one of many. It's about seeing rather than just looking when you take photographs be sure to do what I'm doing and I'll explain to you how I get this effect by the way it's uh, it's called tone mapping and if you look just look at the people in the hedge there you'll see quite a lot of them this is a man that appears to be looking over with his helmet on he's looking over the hedge like he's looking for the enemy coming and behind him is a very good example of a spirit a ghost standing there with his lobster pot hat on and his armor and you can see his belt and the bottom parts of his uh the armor that would come below his waist and you can see straps and so forth and he's standing there again looking over the hedge as though he's waiting for somebody to come It's no good trying to explain what we think happens on the other side, we don't know. By the way, in doing what I'm doing now, that drawing I'm doing now, I'm actually covering up um, a couple of very good examples of like cavalier type faces with the moustaches and the little goatees. But if you unwind that, you'll see what I mean. It's best not, guys, to dismiss any of this stuff. You know, we don't know enough about our reality to dismiss any of this, and I've been doing it for so long. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, guys. I have so much of this stuff. And I'm going to upload quite a bit more, so you'll get to see more examples. This is just one photograph, guys. Let me just remind you that this is just one picture. Here you'll see two more men crouching down. One bent over and the other one standing in front of him. But there's more going off around them. If you look very carefully, you'll see a lot more going off. It's a, it's, it's a bit like adjusting your eye. Do you remember those magic pictures you used to be able to buy where you had to squint your eye to be able to see what was through it? Well, this is a similar type of thing, except that it's a bit more obvious than that. Yeah. There is no illusion at all. They are there. It's just that uh, the way we have been programmed, the way we've been i don't know brainwashed conditioned if you like uh into believing that there's nothing beyond this life nothing beyond the death of the physical body and it's, it's just lights out you know the, the fact that you believe that means that you're not going to look for anything or find anything you won't believe it or see it uh, but believe me guys it's there if you take the time and uh you can do it with your with your existing photographs you're gonna find it there's nothing special about my camera or about my computer or the uh, uh the editing software this is just paint shop and um at the moment i'm recording the video on coral video studio x10 there's nothing special about it don't forget it's tone mapping is what you need to look at a setting of 33 over 100 in the two boxes but do your own experiments this is just about changing the tonal qualities of the photographs so that this stuff jumps out at you. It's not that you can't see it without doing it. This just makes it a bit easier. So there we are, folks. Just one photograph. And remember, all these men are buried in this field to the left there. Very brave men. <laughs>